Hey, I'm Bob, totally blind since birth into Power Rangers. Got the Shout Factory box set in my hands yet again, and we're talking about episode 63, The Mutiny, part three of three, the conclusion to the big season two three-part premiere. So part three of The Mutiny premiered on August 5th in 1994, yet again during prime time. I remember being back in Texarkana as this episode was premiering. I watched it with my cousin TJ. He and his sister Sarah were down visiting at the time. And I remember watching part two of the X-Men season three premiere right after Power Rangers. They both aired that particular evening. But yeah, in this episode, we get to see the Thunder Megazord in action for the first time. I remember how the Zords, they just stopped attacking as the episode begins. So right at the end of part two, they were coming at the Rangers, but they suddenly stop when part three begins. And Lord Zed, he's gotten the Zords to change direction, and now they're going to target the Charity Motor Marathon. They're headed for the rally. So Perantis Head, he plays his little ditty, which is more like, I guess, energy blasts from his fish flute chain thingy. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> and uh, the Zords... And they quit playing with the Rangers and start messing with the civilians. So apparently Zed's first wave of attack, as he says, it's going to be against those annoying humans called teenagers. I don't know what kids ever did to you, Lord Zed, but um, come on, show them a little bit of, of love. I mean, they're they're moody and, and they eat all your food. I, I, I remember being a teen myself and, and, and they, um, you know, but, but they're cool. Leave him alone, man. So, yeah, the Zords are headed toward the rally. You have Dragonzord firing his missiles. You have Tyrannosaurus firing uh, lasers or fire out of his mouth. And I always loved the uh, the mayhem that was going on there. I really love it when Zords uh, start attacking things. That's pretty cool. You have Billy and Trini working on the signal blocker. They finally get it finished. And it doesn't work when they get on the battlefield. So they're trying to buy some time. They form the Power Blaster. I always love seeing that thing formed. And, uh, yeah, they're acting like they're going to fire at the Zords. They turn around they blast Peranta's head. And uh, Billy has some time to change the battery around because I think he put one of the batteries in backwards or maybe both. I've done that before. Tommy says something smart like, our genius, but I, come on. Come on, everybody puts the batteries in backwards once in a while. Give Billy a little credit there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the signal blocker is engaged. And uh, the Zords, they, I think they shake hands. Well, Tyrannosaurus has stubby little arms and claws, though, but I guess they, they give each other, you know, a fist bump. If Tyrannosaurus can make a fist. And Lord Zed, he gets so mad that he's going to send the Zords back into the earth from whence they came. And I remember when this scene occurred, uh, thinking, man, just how powerful is this guy? He opens up the earth and, you know, in go the Zords. But of course, uh, Zordon and Alpha, they're on top of things. And they retrieve enough of the old Zords to finish the new zords they talk about recalibrating the morphing grid and encasing the zords in static power i'm not sure what all goes into the creation of the thunder zords i guess the uh, the old zords kind of morph into the new zords so i don't I, it's uh, it's all morphing grid jargon to me you guys i don't understand i think alpha says something about refractorizing the morph waves i'm wondering if it's, if it's just made up stuff there's not really a a science to it well there is and it's in the power rangers universe but none of us live there and i don't know if any of us have studied um morphing grid happenings well zordon probably has but uh he doesn't live in our universe so you have uh, the rangers going back into battle and we also see lord zed throwing his growth grenade down for the first time that was a pretty cool uh, way to make the monsters grow and Peranta said, you know how it goes. He grows the rangers. They summon all their zords. And um, I immediately wanted these things for Christmas. I don't know if any of them were out yet by August 5th. I certainly hadn't seen any of them while we were out and about looking for toys. But yeah, we get to see Red Dragon turning into warrior mode, of course. And then he kind of puts on all the other zords as if they're armor. I love the assault team sled, too. And I remember having to buy uh, the assault team and the Red Dragon Thunder Zord uh, sold separately, of course. That's the only way you could combine the Thunder Megazord. I don't know if they made an actual complete set. 
I had to buy them separately from a little place called Lane's Toyland in uh, in Texarkana. If anybody remembers that, um, I don't even know if it's still there. I, it, I've been away from Texarkana for 15, 16, 17 years now. I don't even know. And yeah, Thunder Megazord is formed. Tommy, of course, he's back in the command center. And Alpha's trying to get him to cheer up because he, you know, he can't have a Zord. His powers are limited. Alpha says they're they're going to work on a way to bring his powers up to full. And of course, the uh, Perantis head goes on the uh, the offensive, and they fight for a bit. And rather than a finishing slash from the power sword, he is dispatched with the new Thunder Saber. I like the Thunder Saber quite a bit because it was in that sheath, and I think it it looked a bit more fancy than the old power sword did. I want to say it might have looked a bit more like a, a king's weapon or you know it had a jewel in the handle at least the toy did and uh, lord zed was extremely ticked off because he lost narcissist that he is he blamed his minions for failing goldar apologized uh to lord zed he says i'm sorry you failed master and zed says something like i didn't fail you failed you all failed just like you failed before and so of course he's blaming everybody else for his own mistakes he's blaming everybody else for putting z's on the putties too i guess and uh yeah you know it's it's kind of meet the the new boss same as the old boss but i love lord zed i still do and um i i like that he's blaming his minions for his own mistakes i mean guys like lord zed um they they don't admit failure because they can do no wrong, you know. And uh, we see the the ending of the episode there. They're in the command center, and uh, Tommy's wondering what happened to Rita. We see her on the viewing globe, seeing a ninety nine bottles of slime in her little dumpster there. And Zordon actually laughs, which kind of creeped me out the first time. He did actually chuckle a bit earlier when Alpha was uh, cheering for the Rangers to take down Peronta's head when they were fighting in their Zords. But Zordon laughing, it did creep me out a little bit for the first couple seconds but then i was like oh hey this guy this guy can express emotions so uh yeah i kind of like that little zordon laugh nowadays it makes me laugh and of course at the end of the episode they fix bulk and skull's bikes apparently they're still affected by Peronta's head spell even though he's destroyed usually when the monster is destroyed the spell uh, of the episode it wears off but not today billy had to use his signal blocker again and the boys are fine they tell everyone that they're going to find out who the Power Rangers really are, reiterating what we found out in part one. And of course, the episode ends with the Rangers winning the, the charity motor marathon. And uh, this episode, after it first aired, uh, it had this little preview of uh, season two. We, we heard Dave Mallow coming in saying something like, coming this fall on Power Rangers. And he talked about new Zords, new villains, new surprises, things like that. I don't know what all we saw because there wasn't much dialogue just a simply awesome and i want to say that might have been it so yeah anybody who can track down that little clip it's on the internet i'll probably try to uh, post a link to the video on youtube it was a really cool little sneak peek of uh, the episodes we were going to be getting and I, i'll always remember that coming on right after the mutiny wrapped up in prime time just something to keep you coming back or to make you want to come back in september on uh was it the 13th when the new episode started airing because uh, I remember them airing the, the three-parter again, the Mutiny three-parter, a couple Saturdays. And then part three wrapped up on Monday, September 12th, followed by the new episode starting on September 13th. So yeah, it was a really cool primetime event that a lot of us remember watching quite fondly, actually. And I love this three-parter. I, uh, I tend to watch it at least once a year, especially around July 21st when it did premiere for the first time. It's a little Power Ranger uh, Power Rangers tradition I go back to every year, along with Day of the Dumpster on Power Ranger Day in August. So yeah, pretty cool three-parter. Be here next time when we talk about the Wannabe Ranger, another one of my favorite episodes. We have Paul Schreier doing the voice of a monster in that one, so can't wait to talk about that episode. Boy, did he do great. <laughs> so until next time, may the power protect you, and hear you later.